Hi, welcome back to the last episode of these mini series. Today we're modeling the last room, which is a cute mini bedroom. Let's go. Here's what the end result is going to look like when we're done with the tutorial. I'm starting as usual, creating a cube, deleting three front facing faces and using solidify modifier on it. I added an edge loop and separated the top part into its own object. This way I can change the thickness of just the top part separately. Here I'm making the floorboards and selecting every other edge to dissolve it. If you've been paying attention during the previous video in the coffee shop scene, you already know that what I should have done instead was use the select shortest path. It's a tool that allows you to select the first edge, hold control, select the last one, and then you'd be able to choose the amount of edges in this case that are selected and deselected in between those. Here, as you can see, I'm starting to work on a window and then I'm going to move on to bigger pieces of furniture as usual. This room is a little bit different from all the other ones because this time I didn't have a detailed sketch, or rather I didn't have a sketch that I ended up going with. To tell you a secret, I sketched the bedroom first. It wasn't actually the last room that I designed. Here's what the sketch that I'm working off of right now in the video was looking like. As you can see, there are way more pieces of furniture in the room, compared to the result that I showed you in the beginning of the video. That's because I designed this room before I ever decided that the rooms are gonna be mini rooms with less furniture than a regular room, so that you can actually see the results, the details that I'm adding to each individual piece of furniture. So I wanted to tell you a little about my thought process when I'm deciding which pieces of furniture to leave, which ones are essential and which ones I can skip. When I was starting with a sketch, the only thing I knew is that this was going to be a cute isometric bedroom. What I ended up going with was a bedroom where the bed is not the main object. So what I wanted to show is that this person cares more about the knowledge than about their living conditions. To show that, I decided to have a golden telescope compared to something like a rustic bed that probably should look like they just built it themselves from the scraps of wood that they found somewhere. And me describing that to you just now is exactly what my thought process was when I was deciding on which parts of the image are essential. When I describe the idea behind the image, this is what I talk about. The bed compared to the telescope. What I wanted to have as well is their work desk with a bunch of papers and books on it, something for, I don't know, maybe they're tinkering with, or maybe some of their research papers that they're writing. I wanted to also have a bookshelf under the bed, but all of those things were extra. The essential part of the idea is what I was describing in the first sentence. The bed compared to the telescope. So that's what I kept. When you already have an idea, dropping something is really difficult. And you would think, oh, people would absolutely miss that. But in general, in my experience, people don't really know what they're missing. For example, if you've been watching the series, if you've been paying close attention, or not even close attention, if you've just seen the first episode of this series, the one where I was modeling the bathroom scene, have you noticed that there was no toilet there? And you personally might have. But I showed the resulting image of the bathroom scene to someone, and they looked at it for a while, commenting on the overall vibe of the scene, the colors, the composition, things that they liked about it. And only when I mentioned that there is no toilet did they notice that. And that's a toilet in the bathroom. I guess there are places in the world where the toilet room and the bathroom are usually separate, but but it's still very common, right, to have a toilet in the bathroom. So if you're skipping something like a work desk in a bedroom where, I mean, not everybody has a work desk in a bedroom, so nobody will ever notice something that you skip. So I guess the generic quote about uh, the perfect composition being the one that you can't remove anything from is kind of very applicable here. Here are the work in progress shots for the bathroom scene. As you can see in the first sketch, it was just a regular sized room and uh, yeah, it had a toilet there. But because the main inspiration behind this room was the Zen space full of candlelight and coziness and atmosphere, I decided that a bathtub is going to be a focus point of this piece. 
Back to the bedroom. As you can see, I designed the bed itself and the telescope. Now I'm thinking, what can I fit under the bed? What would help me tell the story that I want to tell? I decided that this cozy nook was pretty much perfect for reading a book there. So here is me making a book. By the way, isolating your objects when modeling them is an absolute lifesaver. You do that by pressing I. As you can see, I started with a rectangle, beveled the edges on the spine, and inserted the faces where the paper would go. Then I copied a bunch of rectangles of different thickness to imitate the pages. To make a bookmark, I copied an edge, scaled it, extruded it a couple of times, and then beveled the edge where the bend would be. I added an edge loop in the middle and moved the vertex up so that it imitates a cutout. This time, as you can see, I didn't use the solidify modifier, I just pressed Ctrl FFS to extrude faces along normals. This is because this bookmark is a tiny part of the book and I wouldn't want to make it into a separate object just to add some thickness. Here I'm doing the same with the belt that goes around the book. Control FFS, the best shortcut in Blender, by the way. What kind of cozy reading nook wouldn't have a flashlight? Let's model one. I'm starting with a cylinder using the Add Primitive tool, adding the edge loops, shrinking the bottom part down, inserting the top face, and beveling all the straight edges. Let's make the button. I'm copying the edge and converting it to a curve with the rectangular profile. Alternatively, you can just copy the face that is facing the camera. As you can see, I made the entire button with a combination of bevel, insert, and extrude. The material setup here is very easy, all of them are principal BSDF, with variation just in base color, roughness and specular. The light bulb is also emissive, and the mirror material around it is also metallic. Just an emissive light bulb inside there is not really a strong enough light source for this scene, so I'm also adding an area light. I'm making it circular and also I'm parenting it to the flashlight so that I don't have to worry about the light separately from the flashlight. I added a lot of details to the objects already and I didn't figure out the colors or lighting just yet. It's definitely time to do that. Here you can see I want a contrast, I want a dark scene, I want to exaggerate the warmness and coziness of this reading nook. That's why I'm adding a very very warm light coming out of flashlight and contrasting it with the cold light coming from the street. I'm experimenting and seeing which lighting setup would work. If I rotate the flashlight towards the ladder, it's gonna add a rim light, so accentuate a ladder, versus if I rotate it towards the telescope, it's gonna add this nice rim light on the telescope. And since the telescope is one of two primary elements of the scene, the focus of it, I'm going with the rim light on the telescope, so the flashlight pointing right. Time to add more details. As you can see, I added some imperfections to this ladder because I want the whole bed setup to look rustic. And here I'm bringing elements that we modeled in the previous tutorial. A plant, a wall light, and some candles. All of them I modeled in the first episode of the series where we were modeling the bathroom. Adding so many things that emit light made me realize that this is one of the very few illustrations of mine where most of the sources of light in the scene are actually physically present in the scene. That's pretty rare, but I guess I already talked about it in one of the previous videos. Here I'm adding more imperfections to the bed frame. To get these chop marks, I'm beveling a vertex on the edge loop in the middle of the plank. This is my favorite way of adding this type of imperfections to wooden objects, but you also gotta be careful with it. It sort of is a destructive way of modeling. That is the case, because when you're beveling the vertex, you're getting two vertices. So instead of the quad that you had, you're making an n-gon. The only problem with having an n-gon there is that later, if you wanted to add more edge loops, you wouldn't actually be able to do that, because you can only add edge loops to quads. So you would have to use a knife tool instead, or at least that's what I usually do if I have to use an edge loop somewhere where I have n-gons. In general, n-gons are not really a problem while modeling. But if you've ever been anywhere on social media, you might have heard otherwise. <laughs> to quote a YouTube video by Passive Star, N-guns are fine as long as all the vertices are planar, as long as mesh is not deforming, and as long as you're not subdividing. Luckily Blender has triangulate modifier, so before expert I usually just add triangulate modifier to objects. Or for example, in the FBX expert there is a triangulate checkbox in the settings. I started triangulating my models before Expert when I was learning Substance Painter, and I made this gunk droid from Star Wars. If you look at it closely, you can see that the white stripe that is supposed to be completely horizontal in this render looks a little bit wobbly. 
And the reason for that is probably differences in triangulations in Blender versus Substance Painter. Meanwhile, in the time lapse, I'm experimenting with the color of the ladder. For this image, I went with a pretty limited color palette, which is basically a secondary color palette, just shifted a little bit. It's purplish and orange, and I use green as the accent color. So choosing the color for the letter was kind of difficult because of it blending in either with the purple wall behind it or with the wooden bed. I ended up solving this problem not with color but with light, by adding a rim light behind the letter. By the way, the wooden texture that I'm using, and also I'm about to add a blanket texture to the scene, both of those are from Polyhaven. It's this cool free asset library with a relatively small team of creators behind it, I use their textures and HDRIs quite a lot. They also have models, I think. To quickly add textures like this, you need to press Ctrl Shift T to make all the setup appear. Just make sure to go to Preferences Add-ons and enable Node Wrangler add-on first. Here I'm adding some final touches, playing with the depth of field, adding some emissive particles. Later I'll adjust some compositing settings and play with curves for color correction. To access those, you need to go to Render Properties, Color Management, and click Use Curves. I don't always use Blender for this, but I feel like it's a nice feature to have. That's one of the reasons I love Blender so much. And here's our cozy bedroom done! I think it's actually my favorite of the five. Here are all of them side by side. Let me know which one of them is your favorite. If you end up following any of the tutorials, please share your results with me. I would absolutely love to see them. That's it! All of our mini isometric rooms are done. Thank you so much for watching this series. I really hope you enjoyed them. If you have any feedback for me or any questions left, leave them in the comments down below or tag me anywhere in social media. I'm Julie Strader, basically everywhere. Thank you again and bye.